back to the past To play the shitty games and suck ass He'd rather have a buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat the rotten asshole Of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard Nintendo nerd He's the angry Atari Sega nerd He's the angry Video game Nerd In all the annals of history No game has ever Slurped so much shit as Hyde Glide. Well, actually, no, not really, because compared to the shit I play, it's pretty much intermediate diarrhea. But anyway, eight years ago, I played the first Hyde Glide. Since then, I've gotten a lot of requests to review the other Hyde Glide games. The other Hyde Glide games? Because the first one was so good, you gotta have more! You know, sequels to games that already suck Donkey Kong Dong? That, I can't stand. I, I can't stand the sound of it. Hide lied. Hide lied. <laughs> Guess we just gotta get it all out. So here's Super Hide Light on the Sega Genesis and Virtual Hide Light on the Sega Saturn. Virtual Hide Light is actually a remake of the original, while Super Hide Light is a Genesis port of the third Hide Light game from Japan. Yes, you heard me right. This is the third installment. The second one was only in Japan. Japan should have kept them all and incinerated them. So, without further ado do, let's start with Super Hide Light. Let's pop this fucker in and get this over with. The game starts up with a collection of the most shrill noises the Genesis could possibly produce. This is the closest you could get to 16-bit nails on a chalkboard, and it's playing over one of the worst logos ever designed by humans. If you didn't already know this is a Hide Light review, you'd have no idea what that says. So right off the bat, it's an all-out assault of the senses on two fronts. And look at that cutscene. It looks like a two-year-old discovered Microsoft Paint. When you start, you're given the option of a character class. There's four. Warrior, Thief, Priest, and Monk. The one thing I do like about the game is you can put up to eight letters for your name, so I can write pretty much any curse word I like in here, like a uh, fucker or dick face dildo. Nah, it doesn't fit. But anyway, I'm gonna go with the classic standby. Ass! And with that, we have the last nice thing I will ever say about this game. Dear Lord, look at this. Everything looks like pixelated ass splatter. The people are nothing but a diuretic debacle moving around at one frame a second. I can't even tell which one I am. I mean, for the love of sweet shit take mushrooms, and yes, like the annals of history, I know what it is. It's shit talk, eh? But it's spelled shit take. This game looks like the glitch gremlin had a freaky fuck fest all over it. And this isn't even a glitch. It's just how the game looks. This game looks like the original, and it's twice the bits. Supposedly, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Well, this one does jack shit! Super Hide Light is just downright ugly, and it came out in 1990. Fantasy Star 2 came out on Genesis the same year and looks 10 times better. I mean, even Final Fantasy on the NES had better graphics than this hog vomit. So let's play the damn thing. The first thing I do is go out of the town and get my ass handed to me. Your character doesn't start with weapons, you have to buy them. So you walk all over this hodgepodge building that defies all architectural logic. Oh, and be careful when you're buying stuff because everything in this game has weight. I understand this is commonplace in most RPGs now, but how does it make sense that a dagger weighs twice the amount of a goddamn club? Is the dagger made of solid lead? Fuck it, I'm buying a club. Ass! So it turns out I'm also supposed to stop at the general store and buy some healing items. Where's the general store, you might ask? Why, in a generic unmarked building that looks like a regular house. Seriously, how was I supposed to know that? At least the weapons store looks like an important building. The general store is tucked away in the back like it doesn't matter. And again, what's up with the weight? Why does the Japanese helmet weigh as much as a club and dagger combined? 
Oh, and be sure to buy some food, too, because if it gets too far past lunchtime, you lose health and die of starvation. I actually timed it. It takes about two hours in-game before you die. So don't skip any meals in this world. The consequences could be deadly. Imagine living in this world. You're late for work, so you skip breakfast, and then two hours later, you're in the middle of a meeting, and you drop fucking dead in front of all your co-workers. Nothing left but a withered husk. Tragic. So now that I have all my crap, it's time to kill monsters. But not all the monsters. You gotta make sure you're only killing the evil monsters. According to the manual, killing good monsters will lower your morality and you won't become a true hero. So don't kill the slime, tree spirit, or phantom, but do kill the heavy slime, cannibal, and wraith. Makes sense, right? Except it's all in black and white and they all look the same. And for the love of God, don't kill Sarah, the kangaroo rabbit thing. So after killing a fuck ton of monsters, you can use your experience points at the temple to level up, or buy spells at the wizard's house. The first spell you get is Illusion. All it does is make everyone on the screen freak out. Also, for some reason, at 18 o'clock, everything turns yellow. I guess it's sunset, but it looks more like all the grass just dies and the world turns into a 16-bit piss puddle. I have no idea what to do. After running around for hours, and that's real life hours, not in-game, I found these two locations. One is this place where all it gives you is a sound test. Why would I want to walk into a random abandoned town just to hear the music from this game? The other location is this maze. I walk around and just die over and over and over in the same place. I can't figure out where to go. The townspeople just give vague hints, but no actual direction. I can't even buy armor because it weighs too much. So after dying over and over, I've realized something. I'd rather set up a slip and slide over a ruptured septic tank than play any more of it. And that's something I've never even tried yet. In conclusion, the game is shit. Literally. And yes, I mean literally. The game is actually shit. I will back up this claim by reading from a book by Harry G. Frankfurt, a professor of philosophy at Princeton University. The book is on bullshit. It does seem fitting to construe carelessly made shoddy goods as bullshit, but in what way is the resemblance that bullshit itself is invariably produced in a careless or self-indulgent manner that is never finely crafted? The word shit does suggest this. Excrement is not designed or crafted at all. It is merely emitted or dumped. So while the game did not actually come out of somebody's asshole, it sure came out in the same manner. Well, one good thing, you can turn off the Sega, take the game out, and place it somewhere dark and out of the way so you never have to play it again. Maybe Virtual Hydlide will be the redeemer of the series. I mean, just read the back of the box. This game is the first 3D polygon action RPG for any new generation system. It has a digitized main character for the ultimate in realism. Computer graphics and 3D backgrounds created on high-tech workstations. Plus, a unique create a world function with over 40 billion possible combinations. That's a billion with a B, as in bullshit. So, let's refresh. You take the crap factor of the original 8-bit Hydlide, doubled up to get 16-bit shit Super Hydlide, then add a whole new dimension of suck fuckery and get virtual Hydlide. More like virtually unplayable. Oh yeah, it's on the Saturn, so I have to set the date and time. I'll let it keep thinking it's 94, so it doesn't know its cruel fate of being discontinued. Man, oh man, look at those graphics. Did someone sneeze all over the camera lens? The beginning is basically the same as the original Hydlide, where the dragon guy turns the princess into three fairies, just with a lot higher production values. This is kind of like Hydlide Special Edition. To start the game, you need to create a new world. This randomly generates the layout. You still have to do the same quests in the same order, but the locations change. So, uh, who gives a shit? The fuck? Oh, God, this can't be real. I'm wiping the steam from my glasses. The steam that's rising from this pile of goat shit. It looks like the deformed bastard child of CDI Zelda and Ocarina Time Zelda. Why does he walk like that? What a sight to behold. 
Never in all my years have I gazed upon something as grotesquely hideous as virtual high glide. You have every shade of the vomit rainbow and the barf rainbow too. And the first enemies I face are trees. I'm fighting the scenery. Man, what a letdown. And the back of the box did such a good job hyping it up. If you can't believe the back of a box, who can you trust? So the game is a big fetch quest. Just follow the blue mark on the compass, grab the item you need, and run to the next. And just like in the original, I have to grab the crucifix from the graveyard to kill the vampire. In the vampire's mansion, you have to touch a bunch of balls to open a door. The camera doesn't seem to know what to do with itself, and the narrow halls really showcase the terrible controls. This place is a mess. At the end, you get to the first boss fight against the vampire. He even talks. I know what he said. All he said was bullshit. Literally. And yes, I mean literally. To quote Frankfurt again, just as hot air is speech that has been emptied of all informative content, so excrement is matter from which everything nutritive has been removed. Excrement may be regarded as the corpse of nourishment, what remains when the vital elements in food have been exhausted. In this respect, excrement is a representation of death. Okay, this book is losing me. Have you ever looked into a toilet and said, Oh shit, I shot out a dead body! Perhaps it is for making death so intimate that we find excrement so repulsive. Or is it perhaps because it stinks? Yeah, so just as a turd is virtually a corpse, virtual hide light is virtually a game. But anyway, the vampire's a pushover. So hand him his ass. Hand it to him. Just make sure to equip the crucifix, then stand in front of him and swing. Yeah, kill that motherfucker. You, you get, you get tool. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I get tool. They're awesome. The band. As long as I don't have to play this cold and ugly game sober as you vicariously watch me as I hold a grudge with a hooker at the- Oh, never mind. Back to the game. Killing the vampire gets you the super magic lamp. You need this to light up the next dungeon. In here, you get a dark sword which shoots Hadoukens at enemies. It makes the game a lot better. Well, it makes it slightly more tolerable. This dungeon doesn't even have a boss, just a couple of chests. You get tool again and run to the next dungeon. One thing that really pisses me off is having to run back through the dungeon after getting the item. It doesn't warp you to the beginning like in Zelda. You have to run all the way back the way you came. And the later dungeons are long as hell. Some even have more than one level. Now you get the Spectacles of Truth, which let you find secret entrances in the next area. They also turn everything red. It makes the game look like you're playing an interactive colonoscopy, which would probably be more fun. Okay, I can't take this anymore. I'll finish it after lunch. All right, nice and refreshed. Let's finish this garbage. I have to set the date every time? What's the point of a clock then? What the shit? Where's my save file? The game didn't save? Oh, that's right, the battery must be dead because the Sega Saturn has those watch batteries inside. You have to replace them. Yeah, it's this battery right here, 2032. All right, I'm done running errands. Time to run some virtual errands. Thankfully, you can just enter your world code and it'll be the same layout, but you still gotta start from the beginning. You only level up after completing an objective, so killing enemies is pointless. It's just for score. You can, however, use the points you earn to buy items at a store, but they're available for free in the game, so who gives a shit? The only item you should get is the Scroll of Detect. It shows all treasure chests on the map. I ended up getting back to where I was pretty fast. On top of that, I got better items than I had on my first playthrough, so that's cool, I guess. Actually, no, it isn't. The fairy armor looks real stupid. Honestly, any armor you get looks stupid on this guy, but it's powerful, so whatever. Okay, now I'm back where I left off, and it's at this point the game gets tedious as all hell. Every dungeon from here on out wraps all over the place. This is the volcanic cave. It's filled with enemies and fireballs. Even stepping on the lava marks hurt you.
Oh, great, now I'm cursed. Once you find a cursed item, you can't unequip it. This really sucks because you need the dragon shield to kill the mad dragon boss. Oh man, I'm so dead. I don't want to have to run through this again. Do I have anything helpful? Scroll of herb? Here goes nothing. All right, that actually worked. I turned the curse shield into an herb. Now to kick the dragon's ass. Suck on that, you fuck. So more advice, on top of the scroll of detect, also get the scroll of herbs so you can turn everything into herbs. Oh yeah, I forgot, I gotta run back through this hellhole. Oh, and great, I died. Wait, I'm back at the entrance? All this time, I've been running all the way back through the dungeon when I could just kill myself to teleport? Okay, well now I know. Luckily, I found that out before the next dungeon. It's not too crazy of a maze this time, but there's multiple levels to it. Each maze takes you to an elevator down. Another nifty trick I learned is on the map screen, you can turn your character. Just point him in the right direction and hold the run button. And most of the enemies stay out of your way too. I'm killing this dungeon. Oh shit, minecart, whoa! What would a Hydlide remake be without ripping off something from Indiana Jones? All you need is the music from the first Hydlide, and it's perfect. The boss of this dungeon is the evil mage. He floats around twiddling his thumbs or something. He's easy, but you can only hit him when he touches the ground. Get comfy because he takes forever. Oh, come, come on. Will you just land so I can shoot your ass? Come on! fuck down. Get the fuck down. Get the fuck down! It feels like I'm talking to a cat. Get down! Get down! Get down! Get down! <sighs> so after about a week and a half of him floating around, you beat him and get the next item. It's the tears of the earth. The world is crying this game is so bad. You use them at this sign and you make the fortress of fucking solitude appear. I'm guessing that's where Superman 64 lives. This area looks confusing, but it's actually the easiest part to navigate. Just get to the center. The next part is what's annoying. It's a maze surrounding floating blocks. It's tedious, but eventually you get through and fight the boss. That I can't hurt. What? I'm hitting him with everything I got! This is bullshit! See, I hit him with that too. So it turns out the only way to beat this boss and the final one is to find the Sword of Light. That's fine and all, but maybe I could have been told that? Nowhere in the game does it ever mention needing the sword or really any item other than the ones you get from boss fights. In fact, the game holds your hand throughout, giving you a marker to the objective at all times. The sword can be found in that part with the floating blocks in a random chest. So you have to use the scroll detect and check every goddamn chest until you find it. How was I ever supposed to know this? I had to look it up because I couldn't believe the game would just fuck me over like that. But it did. When I looked up that information, I learned something else too. The knight's name is Jim. Jim. Jim the knight. Well, Jim doesn't sound like a knight. It sounds like a nerd. So you get the light sword, you hadouken the monster, the building falls down and the fairies save you. Wow, look at that. He looks like Poochie the rockin' dog going back to his home planet on The Simpsons. I have to go now. My planet needs me. This is the final level, thank God. Now you're actually playing a colonoscopy. It starts with you fighting the vampire again, but this time he has bats that swarm all over you. He's still kind of easy, you just can't bum rush him like last time. After him, you fight the mage, but this time he flies in two directions. Whoa. After you beat these two assholes, it's on to the dragon guy, Viralis, which sounds like boner medication. It's the same shit. You keep hot duking him, he dies, you win. Cue that beautiful FMV. And the fairies turn back into the princess who looks like she just got off the set of a hair metal video. Wait, what? Did she just look at the camera? Is she related to the princess in Sonic 06? Thankfully, Virtual Hydlide is over. The credits play and you get the list of shame set to some shitty stock JPEGs of the countryside. 
You wasted precious hours of your life to give yourself eye strain and motion sickness, and all you get is a fucking congratulations screen. Well, at least they spelled it right. Anyway, virtual hide lied is literally bullshit. We, oh, that's right. Where'd I throw that book? Uh, well, whatever. I don't have an ending planned anyway, so 